All right, good morning, everyone. It is Monday, I'm Anna Gibbs, and this is your Monday Morning Mojo. I'm excited to be here with you this morning, and uh, I appreciate how you get up early, some of you, or uh, take the time to listen to this on your way into work or doing whatever you're doing. And my intention is to give you a dose of inspiration and motivation to help you take a look at what is important in your world and apply it to how you live your life and how you pursue your goals. And it's really an honor to do this with you each and every week. So thank you again for being here and thank you again for sharing the Monday Morning Mojo Facebook page and, and all these um, sessions and recordings with people that you love because I think we all need to be encouragers. We all need to find more positive places to connect and I'm glad that this could be one of them. So this morning I wanna to talk to you about how to get unstuck and really look at how to move forward and start living a more fulfilling life. And listen, we all get into a rut sometimes and uh, sometimes we find ourselves uh, hitting a brick wall, so to speak. Um, and, and that's part of life. And I think that's part of being a human. Um, however, I think that we do set our goals for a reason, right? When we set the goal, we have an intention. And that intention is to achieve the outcome, whatever it is that we desire. And so if we're not reaching those goals, or if we feel like it's uh, taking us longer to get there than what we anticipated, that could certainly be frustrating. And so um, I think when we feel stuck, uh, it can really cause a lot of frustration and maybe put us into some, some self-judgment and uh, that little inner voice starts to become critical. And so being stuck can turn into a lot of other things, right? It could turn into worry. It could turn into um, being disinterested. It could turn into being disappointed. Uh, and all of that could get us away from the goal itself. And so I think it's important to talk about it. Um, and I think that when we do feel stuck, a lot of us might be looking for an external answer or someone else to come along and help us get back on track. And while that could happen, right, you could have a great conversation with a coach or mentor, uh, and certainly coaching is a way to get unstuck. You might even find that some people in your world, peers, coworkers, good friends might even give you words of encouragement and help you move forward. But even then, at, at even during those conversations, it's your choice to move forward or not. So I think that we have to recognize that we have the ability to move forward and we have the ability to make positive change whenever we want. So even when you're feeling you're most stuck, I want you to realize that you have the power to move forward. You have the power to change that. You're in control. Um, and so that can be an empowering thought in itself that can move us forward. So. The other thing I want to say before I give you a couple of ways to get unstuck uh, is I want to ask you a question. Um, is being stuck really always a bad thing? Maybe not, because be, be, sometimes when we get stuck, it might be the universe's way of giving us a timeout or a pause so we can regroup and figure it out. So I just want to point that out, that maybe being stuck sometimes is not a bad thing unless you decide to stay there. All right. If you allow being stuck to become your your new mode, then that could be a problem. Right. Because if we're not growing, we're dying. That's something that Tony Robbins has um, has said for years. And so it's always about moving forward. OK, it's always about moving forward, um, because whenever we stay in one place for too long, it will make us unhappy. And, and so I don't think that that relates to relationships or, but even in a relationship, the relationship is always changing. The relationship should be growing. Um, so just kind of think about that and maybe even write that down, that if we stay in one place for too long, it could make us unhappy. Um, and so progress in itself could become the fulfillment that you're looking for and the happiness that you seek, right? It's, it's, it's knowing that you're always growing, moving forward, accomplishing things. Um, and so that's an important reason to get unstuck, right? So why do we get stuck in the first place? Why do we find ourselves in a rut? 
why do we find ourselves hitting that, that metaphoric brick wall? Well, it could be a few things that might cause us to feel a little stagnant in our life. Uh, and I think that it, it could relate back to the way that we're thinking. And most times it always does, right? Our whole world changes when we change the way we think. So if you're feeling stuck, are you disconnected to your big why? If you're feeling stuck, have you lost a sense of your purpose and passion? Um, you know, Simon Sinek is a best-selling author, motivational speaker, uh, and he has a book, uh, Start With Why. And, and I think that that is really what creates successful endeavors, is we have to have this inner GPS moving us in a certain direction. Because your, your big why is what gives you meaning. Your big why is what puts purpose into practice. And so that is what can inspire us to continue to seek those, those results and seek progress in itself. Another reason why you might find yourselves getting stuck uh, is, and this might have to be a little bit of a uh, deep search, is do you really like to be comfortable? Some of us are programmed to really find comfort in the status quo. Uh, maybe it brings safety, maybe it brings predictability. And, and then there are others of us who are much more programmed to be um, you know, driving and moving forward fast and, and seeking uh, change and opportunity and maybe even some risk. And I think understanding more about how you're wired can be really game changing because when you understand your strengths, your weaknesses and how you're programmed, that gives you a much more strategic approach. So I wonder for some of us, if some of our routines, right, provide us comfort like that cozy blanket. Yet at some point, that comfort zone, that, that comfortable routine, that safety net, it, you, you feel the restraint of it at some point. You feel that it's not really allowing you to move forward in a really big way. And then we feel that, that feeling of being stuck. Um, and so I think that we have to recognize how are we wired? How are we wired? And, and can a coach or a consultant or someone help you look at that and program your thoughts a little bit differently? Another reason why you might be getting stuck is because you have some kind of fear of the unknown, right? Maybe you're moving towards a goal and you're not really sure how to get there. You haven't taken the time to look at all your strategic options or find someone who can really help you uh, with, you know, what the game plan needs to be or the accountability. And so that, that can oftentimes make us feel overwhelmed and frustrated at the same time, and that can shut us down. So it could be that you're, you're stuck behind that. Uh, and so if that goes on for too long, fear in itself can be really paralyzing. Um, so that could be another reason. Um, I think also some of the people in our environment could be a reason why we feel stuck. Are you surrounded by enough people who inspire you, who provide you with ideas, who can give you those strategic options, uh, who encourage you to be more than average? Uh, and so that could also be a reason why we feel stuck. Sometimes the people in our world, they don't mean to, but they can hold us back. And so that could be an opportunity to look at, uh, is there something going on around you? Do you need to seek out the help of other people? Um, could you be comparing yourself to others and getting a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, self-conscious or judgment, judgmental of yourself and, and start to have that little voice in your, in your head go off that says, can you really do this? Um, are you smart enough, good enough? Do you have what it takes? Um, and you know, comparison is the thief of all joy. So sometimes that can bring us down and have us feeling very stuck. So whatever the reason, I think we can all um, acknowledge that being stuck is really not our intention. I think that we have to understand that as human beings, we are growth seeking individuals. We are programmed for evolution. We are programmed for growth. Uh, because if we weren't, we'd still be crawling around on the floor, right? We're always growing. We're always seeking new, new ways of evolving. And so feeling stuck for a lot of you uh, may not really be the option, right? But you're just not sure what to do to move forward. So here are some ways 
that you can get unstuck in life and uh, really allow yourself to get back in your lane and move towards your goals. Um, and so the first thing I would say is examine that big why. When I just spoke to you about a few minutes ago, really reconnect with the purpose behind your goals, your agenda. Why do you get up every day and do what you do? Do you have passion for it? Do you have a clear purpose for the work that you do for uh, anything that is, is really important in your life? Can you reconnect with that big why? Can you pull the layers back and really discover your motivation and inspiration for doing what you do? And when you connect with it, how can you keep it in front of you so that it really is something that is very visible to you, very tangible to you, and it becomes the fuel in your tank, right? So that could be one way to really get unstuck is to reconnect with your big why. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is, is some time to self-reflect. And I know this sounds really simple, but how many of us really take time to self-reflect really take time to ask ourselves some tough questions like, you know, what, what is going on? Why do I feel the way I feel? Examine our limiting beliefs, examine exactly what's going on with our emotions so that we could just figure out maybe why we're stuck. Uh, and, and I know that that sounds really easy, but it might not be for some of you. It might require some meditation, prayer. It might require uh, seeking out someone else to talk to. But I think that at the end of the day, we all have the answers. I believe we all hold the key to what we need to do to really live an extraordinary life. It's just that we either don't take enough time to find the answer or we ignore the answer when it shows up and we push it back. And so self-reflection meditation could be a, a, a good way of getting unstuck. Um, I think the other um, tips that I would give to you this morning uh, is to really look at your goals and ask yourself if you've gotten strategic enough. Because I think for a lot of us, we can create a goal, but do we get into the planning? Do we get into the action steps? Because if we're not clear on what we need to do, well, that can cause a lot of confusion and a lot of frustration and have us feeling stuck. So, it, you know, are you working from a really strategic plan? And are you focused on the priorities within that strategic plan? Is that showing up on your calendar every day? So that could be another way to get, to get unstuck. Um, another tip I will give you is, is something more existential and that is just mix it up. So what do I mean by mix it up? Change your routine a little bit, right? Because sometimes it's the outside influences that, that then just create this mundane, um, you know, systematic approach to life that doesn't create that doesn't inspire creativity, that doesn't really motivate us to, to look at different options. So mix it up, take a different route to work, change your routine a little bit. Um, in the morning, have a different way of starting your day a couple times a week. Uh, seek out different experiences, read a different book, uh, you know, just, just find ways to get out of the normal routine, um, especially when you're feeling stuck because those activities uh, create just that that like habitual feeling like you're on that hamster wheel. So in order to bring in change, you have to change some things. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, the other thing that I would encourage you to do if you're feeling stuck is to take a hard look at what is, what is going on in your calendar? Uh, what is going on in some of your relationships? Is there anything in your environment that is not serving you, that is not in alignment with your values, that is not in alignment with your goals? Because those are things that as they continue to show up cause resistance. And the more resistance you feel, the more likely you will be to disengage. And that disengagement is what then starts to cause you know, the frustration and feeling like you're stuck. So it, it may be that you have to move something around in your environment that's just not there to support you right now. Um, so so that, that's another thing that I would suggest. Lastly, this morning, I'm gonna say this. If you're really feeling stuck, ask for help. 
ask for help with people who you trust around you in your environment, whether it be in your workplace, whether it be a good friend, whether it be hiring a coach or consultant, a therapist, someone who can help you move forward, right? Because even though I believe you hold the key and, they, and you have the power to make change in your life, um, sometimes you need a little, a little bit of, um, of a kickstart. And sometimes you need someone else who's going to hook up those wires and give you a jump start, and that's okay. So seeking out the help of someone who really can help you move forward can be a big way for you to really start to acknowledge what's keeping you stuck and then change your perspective so that you can start changing what you're doing. And that's really the key is changing what you're doing so you get different results. So I hope this was helpful for some of you this morning. I felt like this was uh, on, on a lot of people's minds. Um, again, you know, hitting a brick wall, getting stuck is something that happens to all of us. That's okay. Uh, it's just, what will you do once you realize you're there? Are you willing to look at how to move forward and get unstuck? So as always, I love to hear your comments and ahas. I don't know if anyone here on Zoom has anything they want to say or on the Facebook page, um, but it's great to see you here this morning. And I hope that this was something that you, you got value in. Any ahas or thoughts this morning? Hi, Jill, I saw you come off mute. So maybe you have something yeah, to say. Yeah, of course, of course. Wonderful. Thank you again. Um, you know, I've been on a couple of boards most of my career in most of them, you know, not for profits. We always sit back and go, well, let's do a SWAT. You know, yes. the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And I think that's what I heard in, in what you're saying. You know, spend the time, take it seriously, and look at your own personal strengths, weaknesses. Where are the opportunities? And unfortunately, where are the threats that you're conscious of? So thank you for the reminder. Yeah, no, and that's a great point to connect a SWOT analysis to this because that's really getting into strategic thinking. And I think at the end of the day, it's just knowing that we should take responsibility for our path in life and the trajectory that we're on. And, and yes, you know, sometimes we have to go easy on ourselves and then other times we have to give ourselves that push. And, and I think knowing the difference is what really separates achievers from others who are just struggling and, and knowing when you need to really say to yourself, okay, time out, what's going on? What's keeping me stuck? What are my opportunities? What is threatening my progress? What do I have in my own toolbox as a strength? What do I have that might be getting in my way that's causing me to be stuck in the first place? So I love that you brought the SWOT analysis in. That's that's exactly right. Hi, Erin, good morning. Oh, good morning. I think it's just what you and Jill just said. I, I think sometimes we let ourselves stay stuck because of the fear of finding out what we're doing that we could be doing better. We, we don't wanna self-criticize or, or self-analyze you know, ourselves to find out why we're stuck because most of the times we're, we're stuck because of our own doing. And I think it's scary. And getting past that though is really important because once you get on the other side of being stuck, that pleasure that you get from being on the other side is greater than the pain. So I, oh, I think it's just getting through insightful. that self-analysis of figuring out why you're allowing yourself to be stuck. Yes. And I think that, you know, our feelings can be perpetual, right? If we don't change our thinking. Remember everybody, your feelings are a result of how you think. So when you change what you're thinking, you'll suddenly feel different. And so what I love about what you said, Erin, is again, you know, how do we, how do we take control of a situation? How do we say to ourselves, okay, this is what I'm feeling and it's not serving me. So how can I change it? How can I look at it differently? How can I move forward? Because if we allow ourselves to get, get, get stuck in overwhelm, we start to lose our sense of options. Okay, so that's really important to think about. When you allow yourself to get into overwhelm, you lose temporarily your sense of options. And that's why it's so important. I don't even like to use the word overwhelm because I think it sends a message to our brain and I want to always maintain some control. Not to say that I don't have my moments too, um, but I want to be able to move through it quick enough so that I can get unstuck because um, that feeling of overwhelm makes us feel like we, we are losing our options and there's always possibilities, right? And I think behind this entire conversation, right? Tying back to emotions is how you feel about yourself. 
because when we do find ourselves struggling or being frustrated or hitting the brick wall, getting stuck, whatever, right? We have to make sure that we don't start self-deprecating. We have to make sure that we don't start, you know, being hard on ourselves and realizing that this, this happens to most people and how we respond to it is everything, right? Getting there is not really anything to, to not forgive yourself for, but it's, it's about how you respond to it. And so we have to know that we can change our perception. We can change our thoughts, therefore change our feelings and things start like unclogging again, right? It's kind of like pouring the Drano into the problem. So thanks for sharing that. All right. Well, listen, you, you guys, I want to give you an opportunity to get your day started. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, it's really great that we have this time together every week. And if you find value in these sessions, again, please share it with others. The Facebook page continues to grow week over week. And it's so great to see that. I love coming up with new content for you. If you have anything that you would like to talk about on a Monday morning mojo, let me know. And uh, next week, I will not be here live on Monday morning. I'm traveling. So there will not be a, a Monday morning mojo next week, but I will catch you uh, again back in February. And I look forward to that. But there'll still be great content on the Facebook page and things to share. So look for that. All right, everyone, have a great day. And I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.